Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and in this tutorial today I'm going to show you how easy it is to dip dye pillow candles. A few items that you're going to need to get started is one, obviously pillow candles. So today I have got some paraben wax pillow candles and I've also got a soy wax pillow candle. I've got some paraben wax as well. You can also use soy wax if you are using like soy wax candles. Um, just note that your paraben wax does dry with a little bit more translucency. So it can be sometimes really cool for dip dyeing. Um, and your soy wax will dry with more of a white base. So you're going to get a little bit more pastel tones. Then you're going to need some jugs. Um, you can use other jugs. You could use big metal pitchers if you've got enough for all your colors. Um, just depending on the size of the candle that you're going to do, you're going to need to be able to dip it um, into that size. So if you're only doing really tiny candles, you can use smaller vessels. You're going to need a thermometer just so we can monitor the heat while we're going through it. Um, I'm using a big metal pitcher just to melt down my paraben wax today. And then you're also going to need some dyes. So you can either use your liquid candle dyes or you can use your dye chips. It's completely up to you. Get started and the first thing that I need to do is I need to melt down my paraben wax and then divide my wax out into three separate containers because I'm going to be doing three different colors. Now that my paraben wax is all melted and for this brand that I'm using, it said to melt it at 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius, depending on where you are in the world. So that's all melted and ready to go. So now it's time to set up my dip dyeing station. I am going to be using these plastic jugs today because it's what I have on hand. Um, but if you have metal jugs, they work great. Some people use um, those crock pots or you know the big wax melters and if you've got metal jugs you can put those in there just to keep the wax warm because I don't have one of those and I've got plastic jugs I am going to be doing with water today so I've just got a big pan here with some hot water and then I'm just going to be placing um, my jugs that I'm using today just into the hot water and this is just basically to keep the wax warm we don't obviously want the wax that we're dipping into to start to set we need to keep it at a certain degrees so if you've got big metal jugs and you've got a hot plate you can also do it that way but we just need to keep the wax warm so around 40 um, for this particular wax is really great so all I need to do is just place these in and it's kind of just like a hot water bath Oh, that is exactly what it is. It's a hot water bath, but that means it can set up my three different colors. Obviously you can do more colors if you've got more space and more colors that you want to use. And it allows me to dip in without having my wax starting to set on me and get thicker. So once you're all set up, you can then just disperse out your paraben wax. So I'm just going to be putting them into each different one, just filling it up. dispersed out your color you can then start adding in your liquid dyes and you can make it as strong as you want so I still want these to be a little bit pastely not too strong so I'm only going to go for a few drops but the amount of dye you add in just depends on how strong you want your um, dip dyeing colors to be and how much wax you're using so that's going to change um, depending on what you're using and then I'm just going to give them a good mix through and mix up all of my colors that I want to use today If you are making your own candles to dip dye, I suggest leaving the wick long because it just makes it a lot easier to dip it in, especially if you are going to be doing dip dyeing the whole way up. It just gives you something to hold on to. And then once you have finished your dip dyeing, you can cut your candle wick to the correct length. So this is a soy candle and you can use paraffin doing it to do do your dip dye. If you want to use soy, um, just note because soy does set with that white base that you're going to get really beautiful pastel tones. So then all I need to do is just dip it into the wax as deep as I want it to go. And you just dip it in for a few seconds and you can keep dipping it in 
to build up the color and the wax. You just don't want to leave it in for too long because we don't want to melt our actual candle. But look how beautiful that color is and how beautiful it's turning out. So if you want to, you can go a little bit less the next time and you can start to create like an ombre effect with your dip dyeing, slowly building up that intensity and just going a little bit further down each time to make it a little bit stronger. Or once this color has set, I can then start adding a few different waxes. Now, don't feel like you can only dip dye the bottom of your candle. You can also dip dye the top of your candle by just sticking it in the exact same way and pulling it out. Now, obviously, depending on how deep you want it, depends on how much you need to fill up each of your containers. So if you just want a little bit, fill it up a little bit less. But if you want it a bit um, more to go further down your candle, then you can do that as well. But it's completely fine to dip dye even with your wick because when you light it, it will just burn off that excess wax. For this one, I'm going to layer this and I'm going to do it on an angle. So I'm going to get different colored wax popping through as I change my angle. Now, if you are dyeing longer candles and you don't necessarily have a container that goes all the way up, you can always just take your jug out of the bath and you can twist your candle through it. So that way you can still go and get a really nice dip. If you do find that your wax is starting to cool down and you get that really thin layer going across the top of your wax, you can always take this, swap out the water, put more hot water in or place this back up on um, your stove and just warm it up gently just to get that wax a bit more fluid again. Um, or if you're using a crock pot, maybe adjust the temperature. So if you do find that's happening, because if you dip, you're going to pull up all of that sort of like um, surface, like sort of, I guess, What's the best way to describe it? Like that surface like skin um, to the wax, you're going to pull that up with your candle and you're not going to get a clean dip. So you do need to make sure that your wax does stay quite liquidy throughout the whole process. Um, but you can do some really nice effects, like you can do your ombre candles. And this paraffin wax has worked both for soy and paraffin candles. And like I said before, you can obviously use soy wax if you want to. You're just going to get a slightly different effect. You can also do like the multi-layer dip on the angles. So I've got my green, yellow and blue through there. And you can dip it quite a few times if you want to. Just be careful if you do really thick dips, um, you don't want to accidentally damage it um, when you're pulling them back out because you can get it where it will peel all the layers off. So you do need to be very careful. I find thinner dips are better because you're less likely to get like a big piece peeling off because it's quite thin. And you can also do like ones where you leave the white in the center. So I've just dipped the green and the blue top and bottom, but I've left the white. There's honestly like so many different like styles that you can do. Um, so we've just used the paraben, which gives us that sort of slightly translucent feel to all of our candles. Now with your leftover wax, because you will have leftovers because you need to have quite a lot to actually dip into. With this leftover wax, you can either pour it into a container um, or leave it to set. And then if you want to do the dipping again, you just reheat the wax back up. So there's no wastage with this wax. Or you I really enjoyed doing this dip dyeing technique and I think you can create some really cool and interesting pillar candles with it. I really love this ombre effect as well as the layering of the different colors. Um, you can get some really cool effects, especially using the paraffin wax because it has that translucent feel to it that when you layer over the top of each other, you can get some cool, cool different like soft colors and um, textures coming through. But yeah, you can have like so much fun doing all of the different color palettes. Like 
Honestly, the sky's the limit with the amount of colors you use and what combinations you do. Um, you can do like three tone, you could do five, six if you wanted to. It's really up to you on how many colors and how you dip them. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and whether you would do this at home. Also, what kind of color palette would you go for? Um, but yeah, you could even do like multi-layered different colored ombre. So you could do like pink going into orange or like pink orange, yellow, red, or whatever you wanted to do. Honestly, so much fun. It's super easy to do, and this would probably be a great option for no matter like what skill level you have with candle making. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week. And just thank you guys so much for watching.